Hey everybody, this is going to be a video uh, showing how to use the graphics debugger in Visual Studio. I was sent an example from a user on Discord of their project and they were asking me why they, uh, the triangle that they were trying to draw was not visible. So I downloaded their project and let's just go through uh, the steps I took to figure out the problems. So first I'm just going to run the project normally and instantly I'm hit with an exception. So I go to the call stack and I just go up until I see something that makes sense. And I see here is trying to look through a directory called res textures. And I asked a user about this and they said this was an empty directory. So that's why it didn't get picked up by the GitHub repository. So I can just comment this out because it's not being used anyways. So I go and I run this again. And what I'll see is that this program is making a full screen uh, borderless window and it's just drawing black. There's no triangle to it. So I'm going to stop debugging. And the first thing here is I'm going to run the graphics debugger. So I go to uh, debug graphics, start graphics debugging. And then what I have to do is for some reason, when I use the graphics debugger, his window comes up uh, transparent. So I have to minimize to get to the session and I hit capture frame. And then I can click on the frame uh, name in order to pull it up in the analyzer. And in the analyzer, I see that the render target's being cleared, and then I see a draw call, and then I see present. Well, the draw call is wrong. And the reason that I know it's wrong is because if we take a look at draw index instance, the first argument is the index count per instance. We should expect triangle to have three indices always. Inside of this, zero is being passed in. So now let's find where this is being called, figure out what is happening there. So we'll stop debugging and we will look for, to close out of that, we will look for draw indexed instance. And we see that there's actually this method being called get index count, which you would expect to return three, but it's not returning three. So I'll put a breakpoint here and I'll run this. And uh, I don't really know what, what this is, but I know that inside of this index buffer object, I can look at my variables, here we go. Inside of this, we do have an index count variable called index count and it has a value of three. So I don't have to hard code it. I can just change this to return the index count and I can take out whatever was going on there. So now that that's updated, I'm going to run this again and I minimize, I still don't see a triangle. So I'm wondering uh, a few things. First off, you know, why are we not seeing the triangle, obviously? And then I'm wondering why is there, uh, there's nothing in the output, right? I wonder if the debug layer is even enabled. So we will look for where the device is being created. And we see that the debug layer is actually not being uh, enabled here. What we need to do is we need to add the flag to enable uh, the debugging information. So we just pour that together. And when we run this again, what we will see is in the output, we are, if I can go to it, we are now getting uh, debug errors. And it's saying the vertex shader and pixel shader linkage error, the signatures between stages are incompatible. The input stage requires uh, instance ID as input, but it is not provided by the output stage. The pixel shader is expecting instance ID, but the uh, vertex shader is not outputting that. If I go to the vertex shader, I see it's outputting this output object and it takes in an input object. If I go to the pixel shader, it's expecting an input object, which is weird because the vertex shader accepted an input. And it's also accepting these other things, which doesn't really make sense. So then we say, okay, well, let's look at where these are defined. Well, if I go to uh, this include, I guess he has defined macros for the input and output for every shader type. And uh, I'm not a fan of this, so I'm going to not do that. And I'm going to name these specific things so it's clear what they are. So this is the vertex shader input. This is the vertex shader output. If I go into the vertex shader, I'm going to replace the input with this. 
and the output with this. Now, what I'm also going to do is I know the instance ID needs to be passed down to the pixel shader, right? So I'm going to take this away as a parameter and I'm going to make it a part of the struct for the input as well as for the output. Now back in the vertex shader, I can assign that when I build the output right here. And I've got to go through and make these changes in all these other files. So let's do this real quick. Go to this pixel shader. It should expect vertex shader output. It doesn't need these other things. The primitive ID is not being used in anything. I already checked. So I'm just going to remove that and ignore it. Now let's go to the circle pixel shader, vertex shader output. And some of these are using the ID. So I just need to check for that. Go to the GUI, vertex shader output. And this one's using the ID. So I'm going to replace that with the ID from that uh, variable it's getting passed in. And here the ID uh, that was coming in is being used, but now we're just going to get that from our incoming uh, struct data type right here. And I don't think these other ones were using it, but I'll check just to be sure. Oh, this uh, texture pixel shader, this may have been using it, so. Okay, no, it wasn't. All right, so. Let's run this again, see if we're still getting errors. And I'm not seeing any errors in the output. So our debug errors are fixed, but we still see no triangle. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the graphics debugger. I'm going to open this back up and I'm going to capture a frame and analyze it. All right, so first thing, it's top to bottom, right? Let's look at the index buffer. We expand this. We see that the index buffer, it should be unsigned integers that are four bytes. That's what R32 UNT means. So we click on the index buffer. And I mean, you know, one, two, zero, one, two, three are going to show up the same in, for unsigned integers and integers. But if we're looking at this, we see zero, one, and two, which those are valid. That For a triangle, that's what we would expect. Some combination of zero, one, and two right, and we only have three points for our indices. Next, let's take a look at what gets passed into the vertex shader. So what we can do is we can click on our draw call actually to do that. And we see we have three uh, coordinates. And the first one is negative one, negative one, which would be the bottom left point. Next one is zero, one, which would be the top middle. And the last one is one, negative one, which would be the bottom right. So these make sense. And let's just debug one of these. So to do that, we'll click this little triangle. And I'll put a breakpoint and hit continue. And for my position, I see this is the first one, negative one, negative one, which is the bottom left. It has a Z of one and a W of one. And the W is being overridden to one. I don't think that was necessary. I think he just had that in here for testing. So the what what i'm seeing here makes sense right since all we're really concerned about is the position data this makes sense there's no transformations being uh, performed so what we see here is what we get now the pixel shader is still not being hit so that's concerning and i'm wondering okay is it possible that the order of the triangles is wrong depending on how the rasterizer is set up so I click on the rasterizer state. I see that the coal mode is set to none. So even if the points were backwards, that is not the problem, right? It's something else. So the last thing I can think of is it has to be a depth problem, right? There's some kind of depth comparison test that it's failing. So if I go to the depth pencil state, I see that the depth function is less than or equal. So Anything that's less than or equal to what the current depth is in the buffer should be drawn. Well, what is the value in the current depth buffer? If we click on this depth stencil view, we can see the resource and the resource is that buffer. And we can see all the values. And the D 
is the depth value, the S is the stencil value. Now you see the depth values are all zero. Zero is the closest point to the camera. The depth buffer goes from zero to one, right? It's kind of like your X goes from negative one to positive one, your Y goes from negative one to positive one, but your depth, the Z, goes from zero to one. So when he's drawing those triangles, they all have a Z of one, but the depth buffer already is filled in with zero, but the depth buffer should be defaulting to the farthest point. It should be defaulting to one. So that's the real problem here, I think. And we can uh, test this by first just doing a uh, temporary fix where we go to this vertex shader and we override the Z value. We can override it to zero because we know we're doing a less than or equal comparison. So if zero is currently the value, zero is equal to zero, so this will pass the depth test. And if we run this again, we see a triangle. So that is all good. However, obviously the fix is not to uh, override all of our depths inside of our vertex shader, that would be bad. The proper fix is to find where the render target is being cleared. So do a control F and look for where the render target is being cleared. And what we need to do here is every time we clear a render target, we need to also clear the depth uh, stencil view associated with that render target. So inside of the way that this is set up actually is he has a render target class and the render target already contains the depth uh, stencil view as well as uh, the render target. So this works out perfect for us. And there's a get depth stencil view function right here. So what we can do is when we clear the render target view, we can also clear the depth stencil view and we need to get the depth sensor view here. And for our clear flags, we're going to clear both the depth and the stencil. For the value that we want to clear the depth to, we want to clear it to one because one is the farthest possible depth with this setup. And then we want to clear the stencil to zero. Now that this is done, if we go and run this again, all of our depths should be defaulting to one and now our triangle is being drawn even with us not overriding the z value. So that is pretty much all that I'm going to talk about in this video. I hope this was helpful and thank you for watching.